Hi, welcome back. I'm here with Kathy and we're going to be going through bound angle. And so bound angle is a fairly simple posture, although for many people, especially if they have tighter hips, they find that even such a simple posture like this, they can struggle with if they're not having that proper initial instruction. And with this, just a few easy props, they can take a posture that they may struggle in and make it a lot easier and definitely more approachable. And so with bound angle, we're gonna be placing the bottoms of the feet together. So Kathy's already seated. And so as you place the bottoms of the feet together, you're gonna to be looking for a couple of things. And this is gonna be kind of your clue in to know if you need to add some props in or offer some variations. So for some people, when they sit in this position, they end up with what I like to call their knees as elbow rests. So their knees are quite a bit higher. And then what usually happens is the spine rounds out pretty excessively. So it's almost like they're getting sucked into their pelvis. So obviously if someone's sitting here, it's like, what do I do with this? And so typically the easiest solution is to get them to sit on something. So for Kathy, I'm gonna use a cushion. And I just wanna caution you that it may take more than just one cushion. I've had people sit on multiple blankets to be able to bring themselves out of their pelvis. Basically what you want is their spine to be able to sit upright where their chest can be open and then hopefully the knees to be able to drop open as well near the line of the hip. Now that may not always be exact, but definitely placing something under the pelvis where the pelvis is neutral and stacked and the spine is upright. Now the second thing you want to look for in bound angle is knee tension. Now the knee tension in a pose like this is often correlated back to the tension in the hips. So a really easy solution is just to simply press the feet more forward until that knee tension subsides. And so just kind of offering that range of space can really make a big difference for bound angle. And now, although Kathy doesn't need that option, she's gonna pull her feet back in, just know that that's always something that you can do for yourself or for your students. And then finally, for some, once they get into bound angle, bottoms of the feet together, inhale, sitting up nice and tall, you could offer them something like a folded bound angle. So on the exhalation, really trying to focus on moving from the hips as you exhale and come forward, rather than folding from the rib cage, which is what often happens when the hips are really tight or they're not seated properly, somewhat like on a beanbag or on a block, in order to hinge from the hip, they end up folding and rounding in the back, exactly like that. And so I always remind my students, your spine is not a hinge joint like a door, your hip is a hinge joint. So that's where we wanna be moving from keeping some support in the core as you exhale and come forward is gonna offer you more space in the lower back and also a much better stretch in the hips. And then finally, while you're seated forward, you can either use the elbows to press down on the thighs gently, or you can also outstretch the arms in front to continue the stretch through the back. Now, even if your arms don't go very far, remember that there's still a stretch going on in the back even with that arm just lengthening out and forward. And then finally, once you've completed the pose, you can take a nice deep breath in and then slowly start to roll back up, exhaling, stacking your spine, sitting nice and tall. Now let's say that you're someone that can take this pose just a little bit further. A nice option is to actually take a block and place it between the feet. Now this is gonna challenge the hips because now that hip space is challenged just a little bit more. There's a space between the feet um, that's increased more than its normal space. So you're definitely gonna notice that challenge in the groin and that challenge deep in the socket. And then same thing again, sitting nice and tall, or you can offer yourself on the exhale that simple fold forward, but that may not also be necessary in a pose like this once you add that position here. So as Kathy rises back up, some final two minutes that you can add to this posture, in addition to using a block, Often people comment on how to hold on to the feet. Now, I'm not a big fan when people have their feet together pulling onto the toes. What usually happens if Kathy brings her feet back together and people grab a hold of the toes here and yank up, all those little magical tendons and fascia strings on the toes connect back up with the knees. So when you're wrenching and pulling on the toes themselves, that is really gonna react back in the knee joint and this is not an area that we need to mess with. And so instead of pulling up, just on the toes here. Instead, take your hands underneath the outer edge of the foot by the pinky toe 
and you can either pull up on the feet, creating some space and a little bit deeper hip stretch, or you can peel the feet open with your thumb underneath the ball of the foot, kind of like you break open an orange, which is also going to change that space in the hip. So just some options as well to work with in a pose like bound angle. If you're finding that you're someone in this pose that's having some hip pinching or even some knee pinching and either an adjustment that you as the student can do or you as a teacher can assist your student in is actually assisting in an external rotation on the thigh. So either the students can easily grab hold of their thighs like Kathy's doing and just roll the thigh out or you can even come behind them and just offer them some space by placing the thumb on the inside of the thigh and then simply assisting in that external rotation. And she could even bow forward now and just trying to help increase that space through the groin. And this may also assist if they have knee tension or knee pinching. This may also assist in a sensation like that. And then gently coming back up. I can definitely tell that challenge is increased with Kathy in that bound angle just by rolling her thighs out a little bit more externally. So a great pose as a warm-up, a great pose complementary to a more of a challenging sequence, even as a cool down. Now you can take this posture very easily as well onto your back. So if Kathy lays onto her back now, knees bent, feet flat on the floor, and she can simply just drop the knees open, bottom, excuse me, bottoms of the feet together into her climb down angle. Now, try not to let the back be excessively pulled into a lordotic curve, or what would be called an anterior tilt, pelvis tilting up towards the ceiling. She can definitely allow that space to the groin to come in, which is going to give you equal space in the lower back. She could also take her arms overhead and now really increase the length and space in her back as well. This becomes a great passive posture, maybe pre-shavasana um, or maybe pre-hip work or post-hip work that you've done on the floor. Um, and then you can vary how far the heels are tucked in towards your groin, which changes the nature of the stretch as well. So just know it's not a one size fits all and we don't have to tunnel vision ourselves into a pose to look like the book or be identical. Give yourself some playroom. If in this posture somebody has a lot of hip tension or they feel like the groin is really gripping while they're in this posture, an easy solution is to simply place a block under each of the knees so that it's about mid-thigh, and this becomes another great passive posture, much like a yin pose, where now they can just let gravity bear down on their body, and there's literally no holding on in the pose whatsoever. So a great way to end a practice, a great way to soothe lower back pain, a great way to create space in the hips. So now you have several different ways that you can work bound angle and hopefully several solutions that you can utilize for yourself or for your students to enhance your practice. Great job.